Hello, welcome back to another geography video. Uh, still looking at coastlines, we're going to look at depositional landforms today. So spits, bars and tombolos. Let's get straight into it. Right, first task I want you to do, um, I want you just to draw a quick sketch of a constructive and a destructive wave and label both so you can see the differences between the two. I don't really want you to look back at your notes. Um, if you are really struggling, have a quick glance, um, but don't look too long because um, otherwise there's very little point in doing it. Um, just pause the video, give yourself about five minutes and then come back and see if you have got things correct. Right, these are the two different waves, constructive, destructive, full video on it. If you've forgotten, go back and watch that again. Um, hopefully you've got something similar to the diagram on the board. I know it's not great quality, um, but the labels are more important for me. So the destructive wave, hopefully you've got that it's got a strong backwash and a weak swash, um, high energy and high frequency. Constructive waves, pretty much the opposite in every way. Uh, weak backwash, strong swash low energy and low frequency hopefully you've got that if you haven't add those into your diagram the more times you do it the more you're going to remember it right moving on uh, first thing i'm going to look at in this video is the formation of a spit so like i've said we've got spits bars and tombolos fairly easy to get your head around once you know what we're talking about so um let's get straight into it i suppose uh, in terms of a formation of a spit, they work on um, longshore drift. So if you haven't watched the video on longshore drift, again, go back and watch that because that'll influence how easily you can understand what we're going to talk about. So in terms of this diagram on the screen at the minute, you can see longshore drift is happening in sort of an easterly direction. So remember, it's a swash coming in at a an angle from the prevailing wind and the backwash coming in straight down due to gravity. So the direction of the prevailing wind is sort of in like a, a northeast direction with longshore drift happening easterly. Um, so as longshore drift's happening, material and sediment is being carried along the wave, um, along the wave, sorry, in this sort of direction. Once it reaches an area of the coastline where the land changes direction. So you can see this little change in shape of the land. This is where that sediment that is carried begins to be deposited or dropped, basically. So it's building up on these, this sort of area here, right on this sort of corner of the headland. Over time, as this increases, more and more sediment is being dropped. So the spit actually gets bigger. It sort of juts out into the, into the water, into the sea, as you can see here. Um, so that gets bigger and bigger. When it reaches a certain um, size, this is where a different wind direction is then affecting it. So you can see that this little curve, it sort of looks like a upward facing hand or finger, I suppose. And um, so as the spit is curving around, this is because there's a wind direction that's changed. So the original prevailing wind was in this sort of direction, as you can see on this arrow here. Once we get to this area here, the wind direction might be in the opposite way. So it sort of curves the spit round. Hopefully that's somewhat understandable. The next set of uh, notes and the next image should make it a little bit easier for you to, to understand. Right, so I want you to pause the video. There's some uh, sentences on the screen. These aren't in order, so I want you to then write them into your book or on your paper in the correct order. Pause the video. Might take you eight, nine, maybe even ten minutes. Um, have a read through it see what makes sense to you, see if you can put them in order. Right, um, this is the answers basically, so I'll just read through them. Uh, the diagram is on the right hand side, so it, it will help us to understand what's being said. So, first one, the material moves in the direction of the prevailing wind along the coast during longshore drift. So we've said in this diagram, longshore drift is happening easterly, prevailing winds somewhat of a northeast direction. Uh, the material in the sea is carried up the beach in the direction of the prevailing wind. This is called the swash. The material in the sea is carried back down the beach due to gravity. This is called the backwash. We should know that pretty much. We've covered swash and backwash quite a lot. When there is a change in the shape of the coastline, deposition occurs. And like I've said, deposition literally just means the dropping of sediment. So it's being carried, it's being transported in the wave. When the shape of the land changes or the shape of the coastline changes, deposition occurs. The material is deposited, starting to build up 
here at the end of the spit. So this is where we start to get that spit forming at this area here. The depositions occur and sediments being dropped in this area land or area of the spit is being built up. Large volumes of sediment help the spit to form, so it's not an overnight thing. It does take a long, long time. A change in prevailing wind causes the spit to curve, so this is what we talked about in this area here. The winds change, which is why it's curved around. Uh, and usually, behind the spit, um, there's a sheltered area where a salt marsh forms. So hopefully you've got those in some sort of order similar to mine. If you haven't, go back, change your answer, um, and put them in order. Right, next thing I want you to do is to actually go back and make sure you've got that diagram on the right hand side or something similar drawn into your book because you will need it later on. An easier or another thing you can do is add the notes to the actual area. So if you want to number them, uh, one, two, three, etc., and then on your diagram you can also add those numbers in, that might help you make more sense of what's being said. Once you've done that, We'll move on. Right, uh, we're going to move on to formation of a bar and a tombolo. These are, again, fairly easy to get your head around once we've discussed them. So they all form uh, basically where a spit has done something extra. So for the first one, this is where a bar is forming. So this is on the coastline where there was an old bay. Uh, longshore drift has happened and has caused a spit to form. Where a spit has grown and has covered up the area of the bay, this is what we call a bar, basically. So the spit has started growing in this direction here. It's got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's actually covered the entrance to the bay, basically. Um, so this is what we call the bar, and it leaves behind a lagoon. So this is an area of water dammed by the bar and will eventually be filled by deposition. So it's getting smaller. This lagoon disappears over time um, because it's filled by deposition. But the bar is this area of sediment and sand here, leaving behind a lagoon. Hopefully you've got that again. What you can do to start off with is start drawing this diagram in and add these labels to the diagram. All the labels match an arrow, so you should be able to eliminate a few, and then for any that you're struggling with, think about it, which one would the uh, statement match. Right, next one, the tombolo. This is where, again, there's a spit being formed on this area here, and there's an area of land or another island or whatever you want to call it, out in the actual sea or in the water itself so as the spit grows eventually it joins um, the island so uh, direction longshore drift is in this area again the spit's being formed it's getting bigger and bigger eventually it joins on to the island and this is what you call a tombolo so it's where the original area uh, was filled by the sea the spit's grown and it's actually joined the island to the mainland Again, draw that in. All of the arrows match a um, bullet point on the right-hand side, so you can join them up together onto your page. Right, um, once you've done that, because that should take you about 10, 15 minutes anyway, uh, we're then going to give you a little bit of a question to answer. So we did one in the last video, um, so hopefully we know what we're doing. Uh, I want you to test yourself, so ideally turn your notes over or move them out of the way, um, just so... Uh, it's exactly what you know and what you can remember from the video. So with the aid of a diagram, explain how spits are formed. Six marks, so it's a difficult question. Um, the diagram's important, the labels are important, and the explanation is also important. Um, so see if you can have a go. See what you can come up with. Um, yeah, pause the video. Maybe six, seven minutes should be ample time to do it. Right. Um, let's go through the answer to that question. So the question again was, with the aid of a diagram, explain how spits are formed. And it's six marks. So this is a quick sketch um, that you could have done something similar to this. Now, in five or six minutes, this is probably a little bit too much. So there's no way you'd have all the time to have all these um, labels on it. But you need some sort of zigzag pattern to demonstrate the swash and backwash. Directional longshore drift is also important. And the prevailing wind arrow, that's again important. The spit needs to be drawn on, and some mention of the curve is also quite important. In terms of the written answer, this is 
an okay example, so I'll read it out to you. Spits are a depositional feature. They occur due to longshore drift. This is where material is moved along a coastline. Where the shape of the land changes, material carried in the wave is deposited. This then builds up and sticks out. Over time, more and more sediment is deposited and the spit grows larger. Spits curve because of the change in wind direction. So the answer has mentioned quite a few things. Mention the wind direction, mention longshore drift, uh, mention deposition. We'll have a look at the mark scheme and then we'll come back to that. So in terms of the mark scheme, you can use this to mark your own answer, I suppose. Uh, we went through it last time. There's three levels. Um, each level potentially uh, more marks. So level three, obviously the highest, five to six marks. So we'll look at level three. It's detailed, well-labeled diagram, swash and backwash arrows correctly placed, and the overall direction is shown. So if we look back at this answer, the arrows are on there. So, although they haven't labelled swash and backwash, we can sort of understand that that's what they're getting at. Um, the account is detailed and explains the different factors in spit formation. So, longshore drift continues and the change in shape. So, we've said uh, there's a change in shape of the land. We've said longshore drift occurs. So, I would probably put this answer in, into the level three category. Probably would get maybe five or six marks. The only thing I would then add to it is, like we said, the mention of the swash and backwash. What are they? Um, and I know in five or six minutes that's a difficult thing to add in, but hopefully just a little mention of swash or backwash or even in the labels would ensure, not that it isn't already, it was definitely the top end of the mark scheme, so definitely in the level three, five or six marks. So you can use this, I'll leave this on the screen, pause it here, mark your own answer, look at your diagram, go back to the other one, and see what's different, see what's on that question. That is all. Um, difficult lesson, quite a few things to get your head around. If you are struggling, go back through it, watch it all again, slow it down. There are quite a lot of videos um, on YouTube or on BBC Bite Size to help you understand spits, tombolos and bars. Um, but like I said, once you understand it, it is uh, quite easy, I suppose. Um, but that's all for today. Hopefully, like I said, you understood it and I'm sure I'll see you again in another video.